one minute to get started. Mm -mm -mm. Hope everybody's having a wonderful night. Getting ready for the big full moon Halloween tomorrow. Hey, welcome. I'm excited for tonight. I'm excited to dive in. We got a lot to talk about. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> All right, woohoo. Okay, let's see. Secret, go in as yourself. You're posting as moon musings. Oh, there you are. Okay, here it is. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Hooray! It worked. Yay! Yeah. We're both here, everybody. Hello, everyone. Welcome, everybody. My camera's like sliding down. Let me tighten it. I got like a. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Welcome, everyone, to our first ever episode of Moon Musings. Very exciting. Um, would you like to go first and introduce yourself to everybody or? Yeah, sure. That's, that's cool. I'm, um, so I'm just talking a little bit about where my spiritual background comes from. So everybody can kind of understand a, a little bit. I first started claiming myself as a witch from like kindergarten, <laughs> forward, but I had learned yoga and meditation. Uh, from my aunt. She also taught me about Native American beliefs and a lot about Hinduism and all of these things kind of instigated my curiosity into everything. I started reading books on palmistry. I started reading books on witchcraft, on uh, even demonology. And um, as I got older, I started integrating more and more uh, different religions. I wanted to read about even about uh, Judaism and about Islam and Christianity. I even read the Bible. But all the all of the things eventually led me to just an, a more open spirituality. I ended up studying tarot and astrology and took it to the professional world five years ago. So here I am. <laughs> Um, I, I have a pretty similar story, I'd say. Uh, so I started out just kind of as a, a weird child. I preferred playing in the woods as opposed to playing with Barbie dolls. And my family kind of raised me pagan. I, it, you know, <laughs> like my dad would read me uh, all sorts of mythology growing up. And we were always different from other people. And my parents really instilled like a deep appreciation for nature in me as I was growing up. And so uh, I was, it's actually 10 years ago this year on Halloween <laughs> that I uh, became a witch or like, I don't really know what to call myself, I guess. I like the term witch, but, um, you know, con like considering TikTok is a thing and everyone seems to be calling themselves a witch fashionably. I kind of am like wishy-washy about that term. But I mean for all intents and purposes I'm I'm definitely a witch and I've been practicing as a solitary witch for 10 years um and like you I have been kind of just all over the place. Um my great grandmother told me a lot about Native American mythology and uh, she was native, I believe. I don't know what tribe she belonged to, but you know, she told me a lot about that. Uh, my dad raised me with a lot of Norse mythology. My mom was Buddhist. I had a lot of influences very young, and it just kind of 
spiraled and here I am today. <laughs> I've been studying astrology and tarot primarily, but also um, like herbalism and like using crystals for various purposes. Um, and then also I do something that I personally call it geomancy. I don't know if it's accurate to call it geomancy but um i kind of create like a energetic grid within a space by using everything in the space like furniture crystals plants etc so that's kind of a little bit of what i do i like that and we're both in other ways we're artists and i feel like that's a part of our craft too mm -hmm. when we create whatever piece of art when we perform that's all another way of, of us doing magic. <laughs> right. I feel like magic is art, really. That's all it is, plain and simple. You know, like taking something and like making something completely different with it. Like painting, for example, you're taking just these colors and these pigments and then all of a sudden you make a whole landscape and a whole world that people could see. That is pure magic. Yes. And yeah, ritual magic is just secondary to that, I think, personally. I want to be seen as an artist first and a practitioner of occultism second. <laughs> I, I get, I completely feel that because I feel like when it comes to creating, everybody can relate to that on some level. Mm -hmm. And it, you don't have to claim being a witch or anything else, a shaman or whatever, in order to use magic. It's not just for witches or whoever wants to claim it as an identity. It's for everybody. And you can do it. Right. So, well, let's dive into uh, the energy is going on right now. Do you want to start us out with some of I'd like to start out by discussing this Mercury retrograde. <laughs> oh my God. I, usually Mercury retrograde is okay for me. Like it's not great, but I can usually, it's okay for me because my Mercury sign is in detriment, which means it's not like the best placement. So like, it's kind of like everyone else understands what my daily life is like <laughs> when Mercury's in retrograde. But this particular one, Oh my God, it's been quite potent. Well, it's um, where I went backward to square Saturn again. So we have, so the Saturn energy that's been going on in Capricorn, it has been mixed up with Pluto and it was retrograde. Okay. And now they're all direct and Jupiter, Jupiter's up in there too, which is actually good energy coming back because it's retrograde too. So it's right. away from that. But that Capricorn Pluto energy is really what's been kind of creating the madness going on in the world right now. Right. And then, uh, like, mixed in with that, we've got Mars in Aries retrograde. I feel like everyone, this the whole time that Mercury has been retrograde, everyone's just like, I'm mad and I don't know why, so I'm going to fight with everyone that I see. And it's very frustrating. It's <laughs> Chiron is also in Aries, so we're all facing our our personal wounds. Like we're not dealing necessarily with traumas from other people. We're starting to face ourselves and where we right. where we've been ourselves. So the, a right. lot of there with the retrograde of Mars is coming from that energy. Right. Yeah. Oh, also for people who don't know, because I feel like Chiron isn't really talked about. Right. Yeah. Uh, Chiron should be considered one of the main luminaries in astrology, I feel. Um, it's it's called the Wounded Healer. It's an asteroid. And I believe that the actual asteroid is on the out. Or it's either like in between Saturn and the next, like the outer planets, or it's like on the very outside of our solar system. I can't remember where it is in the solar system, but it's somewhere. <laughs> in one of those two asteroid belts and it's the wounded healer so um when chiron is brought up in an astrological sense it shows kind of where uh we've accumulated hurt either in past lives or in this life and uh yeah so it's like 
a soul wounding, I suppose. That's the best way I'd put it. And, and on top of that, when you finally get to the point of healing your wounds and learning how to transmute those triggers, then you it actually becomes like a superpower because it's shaped like a key, the symbol for it. So it's kind of like the key when you unlock your wounds and find your healing, you become a healer for others. And it's a really beautiful energy. But it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I see Alex made a good point. Uh, they said that a lot of memories and traumas have been coming up. And I think it's important to note that this Mercury retrograde was uh, it's in Scorpio, isn't it? Well, it was, it started in Scorpio. That's where oh. it stationed to start going backward. And now it's in Libra, like 26 okay. Libra right now. But it's, right. you know, it's relational wounds are coming up to like all of these things. You're looking at it in, in, in a deeper way than you've ever looked at it before, because it started, like you said, with that Scorpio energy. So then it went into from that deep, like diving scorpionic energy to Libra where everything, you want everything to be great and happy. You want everybody to get along. But then right now it's squaring Saturn where there's Pluto and the power structures that are really at play are coming to the surface. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're starting to see those patterns and traumas and, and bad memories come up because you're starting to see the power structures and the dynamics that are at play and it's coming out through our own wounds too even though we really just want peace at this time i feel like libra energy in general just makes people very sensitive <laughs> my my venus is in libra so i've been have just having a time with this transit i tell you what because you know it, it's such a like loving energy libra always has so much love to give and they just want harmony and when when, uh, when it's so potent like this and opposing mars and chiron it's just hard to like get through it it feels extra difficult with all this energy blending together but luckily it's almost over um just so everyone knows mercury does go direct november 3rd and we can all have a, a nice night's sleep some rest from Maybe. this terrible transit <laughs> that's an interesting night for everybody i think i don't know how many people will be sleeping well depending on how that day goes good point <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, yeah, I just want to go back to with that energy squaring is actually part of what's going on with the full moon tomorrow. So mm -hmm. all that is being highlighted and bringing it to the surface, the power structures that are at odds with our desire for peace and actually recognizing the, the deep traumas and the patterns and recognizing what we have to release, full moons are for releasing. And so knowing that we can use that energy to intentionally let go of those patterns. Right. I'm quite excited for this full moon. I can already, I've been feeling it for the last couple of days. Um, it's in my eighth house, full moon in Taurus. It's in my eighth house. Very excited. I feel like this full moon is going to kind of like, let us all breathe a sigh of relief a little bit. It's going to be a nice, like, wash of the canvas, you know? It's got some some intense energies at play. There's a lot of squares and mm -hmm. harmonious flows. But the one major harmonious flow going on is between Jupiter and Neptune, which has been going on, you know? And uh, Jupiter is in Capricorn coming up to that really heavy Pluto Saturn energy, kind of bringing a light toward that, which mm -hmm. they, and Neptune is in its home sign of Pisces. And so them making a harmonious flow gives you the opportunity if you decide to, you know, tap into, uh, you know, a sense of spirituality and even on the level that we talked about creating in any form, tap into mm -hmm. the, make you feel good. And then mm -hmm. you'll be, 
could move through this energy and release what you need to release without too much turmoil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm very excited. I feel like it's, there's still a lot to get through, but I feel like this is a nice, like, checkpoint i suppose and yes yes alex it is a blue moon yes. uh i saw that in the comments blue moons are are fun <laughs> blue moon happens when two full moons occur in the same month so um it doesn't happen too often it's a blue moon it is a full moon and it's halloween so when we talk about all of that energy we could talk about that and uh move into about the difference with because we have uh Samhain, halloween and we have dia de los muertos and these are all three celebrations that are honoring the fact that the veil has thinned during this time so on top of the full moon on top of the fact that it's a blue moon extra potent energy we've got the veil yeah, uh, you know, getting into a little bit about like Samhain and Dia de los Muertos, I find it really fascinating that these two cultures, completely independent of one another, opposite sides of the world, have the same holiday. It's the same holiday. It's so crazy. Sure, there's like details that are different, but the core essence of Samhain and Dia de los Muertos is honoring the dead and revering our ancestors and just celebrating that the earth is like starting to go to sleep and the veil is thinning. It's so fascinating. And I feel like it really brings a lot of like validity to that holiday. Whether or not you believe in spirits or the veil, there's something that happens this time of year that we can all pick up on and that we all like tap into. It's such a magical time of year. It's very exciting. There's a lot of opportunity in if you if this energy intentionally, but even if you don't, there's a lot. Of, I mean, people have fun on Halloween anyway. You know, people get to dress up in characters and they they act more bold. They let themselves loose more than they do probably at any other holiday. Even you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would tend to agree. I feel like Halloween is probably the one night a year that I can like truly be myself in public. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Any other time people are just like why are you dressed like that or like why are you wearing gelfling ears? But I on Halloween no one questions it. <laughs> Right. They're just like, oh, what an awesome, awesome costume. <laughs> costume. Um, okay, so when it comes to Halloween and how we celebrate it now, you know, it's, it's not necessarily, I mean, it doesn't get into why we're doing these things, like dressing up in costume or passing out treats or all of these mm -hmm. uh, traditions that we follow uh excitedly but it does come from Samhain and even Dia de los Muertos to an extent so mm -hmm. do you want to talk about uh Samhain and, and where that comes from and what that's about yeah so Samhain is a ancient Celtic druid holiday um so it's there's not a lot known about the Celtic people because they didn't really write anything down. Same with like the Nordic people. They really only wrote, wrote down uh, like business transactions and like big stones that said things like this land belongs to, you know, this person. So like a lot of what we know is word of mouth and like written reports from people who were exploring during that time. And um, so Samhain was... The, it was the end of the harvest season, and so it was when people were, like, wrapping up, preparing for winter, and, like, all the work was done, and then they'd just party. Like, literally everyone would just get drunk as all hell, and they'd party for, like, six days straight. Samhain actually starts, I think it's, like, October 30th, and it ends November 3rd. It's actually, like, almost oh, a week-long holiday. <laughs> 
I live on a main road, so there's always. Oh, <laughs> I know that feeling. I live by frat houses, so I get it. <laughs> there's always sounds. But yeah, um, so there's actually one historical report of a uh, Samhain ritual that was done by like a village, I guess you could call it, of, of people back in the day. And uh, so everyone would leave their hearths burning, the fires in their fireplaces. They'd leave it burning while they finished up work in the fields and they finished preparing all the food and grain and stuff for their winter storage. And then they would go to the like the town center or like the town altar. Usually there's like a sacred tree or something that people would gather around and that was like their church. And everyone would go there and the druid priests would lead them through like this ritualistic burning of a big wheel and the wheel would spin around as it burned and that was supposed to represent like the turning of the year and the sun moving through the sky and then from there everyone in the village would take a piece of that fire and then they'd go home and relight their own hearths and then after that everyone would go back to the town square and just party for days on end and it was actually believed that if you didn't participate in Samhain and the rituals surrounding Samhain you would actually have a lot of bad luck in the coming year and that the gods would curse you because it was such a sacred holiday back then and why wouldn't you want to celebrate that sounds beautiful and then fun <laughs> right exactly it's also the new year I don't know if uh, I feel like a lot of people don't know that. It's the Celtic New Year. It's the beginning of winter is, is, yeah. So now is also a really good time for, like, manifesting things you want to bring into the new year. Yes. New beginnings. Release the full moon. So mm -hmm. then with Dia de los Muertos, they have where they're honoring their ancestors and those past and they build their ofrenda, their little altar with their um, offerings to their past on loved ones um, with the marigolds. And they usually put their, their, their loved one's favorite food at the altar and a photograph of their ancestors. And uh, they are recognizing that the veil is thin and this is a time where their loved ones can accept their offerings uh, a lot easier while the connection is more open. And on mm -hmm. top of that, with Dia de los Muertos, they honor, uh, you know, Santa Muerta, where uh, she's like the protector of those passed on. She nurtures mm -hmm. and takes care of those um, when they die. She's like the mother of the dead, <laughs> which is kind of sweet and cool. And it's a beautiful way of, um, I think that's one of the other things, other than honoring the fact that the veil's thin, it's all together honoring that cycle of existence. And instead mm -hmm. of being scared of death, this is a time of year to honor that part. And I feel like that's why with Sawin, they celebrate as much as they do because you're alive and you can take part in all of these uh, pleasures and enjoyments and the fullest extent, which is actually right. even the Taurus full moon, so release what uh, celebrate. We get to celebrate Taurus rules of the senses and and indulgence and hedonism. So you can. I didn't even think that. That's that's so funny. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> it just came to I, me. When I'm talking about it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I love when dots connect like that. Right. I, I feel like now, especially in this time with so much like sadness and hate and fear, fear of death specifically, I feel like it's so important that we recognize Sao in this year because, you know, like we need to celebrate something. This year has been so hard for everybody. We all need to like just take some time and really like celebrate and say like, hey, I'm alive. This is pretty cool, you know? And Taurus full moons have always treated me well in the past when I've experienced them. You know, it's always been a good time for like really just like bathing in my senses, you know? Yeah. Yes. It's beautiful energy for that. And um, 
it's a good energy for you with your Scorpio energy in your chart too. And I, my sun is in Taurus and my rising uh, with Pluto on my ascendant is Scorpio. So this energy is just, it's all, all what I love, you know, it's my energy. I feel great with this energy too. I'm excited about this moon. I love, I love that concept of enjoying life with the Taurus versus the death aspect of Pluto, which you need to release and, and let die basically. But even you know, as the leaves fall, like it's the perfect full moon energies for this time. It couldn't be any better. Yeah, it's the perfect blend of opposites. For, for those who don't know, um, all the zodiac signs, Aries through Pisces, they all have like an opposite sign. So like Aries, opposite is Libra, uh, Taurus is Scorpio, Gemini is Sagittarius, so on and so forth. And really, astrology is just like kind of a balance of energies. Um, and so... You know, like we were saying, there's that balance of the Scorpio death energy and the Taurus like life and hedonist energy. You know, it's I feel like really 2020 is lining up to be a really good year overall, all things considered. You know, I've seen so many people like move through this these challenges and this opposing energy and so many people have like risen up and really like improved themselves and it, it's really amazing to watch i've witnessed that too i've witnessed a lot of people well okay because i live in kenosha where we had all the the riots after the jake blake shooting and um you know they burned a big part of our city and there was a lot of collective trauma in our city but exactly like you were describing one of the most beautiful things to witness through that were the people who who rose up into their roles when before they were kind of you know maybe too timid to to feel like they had the power to to do that but when mm -hmm. the time came there they are stepping into their roles and now they're growing exponentially in what they're doing and they finally found the courage through that trauma and right. that's what this year no matter how hard it is this is a year where sh big shifts are happening these and i and i'm not talking literally but the 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 things that we've had to let go of are pushing us to evolve to the next level which again right. full moon energy we have the full moon conjunct Uranus and Taurus. Oh, right. Uranus and Taurus is crazy because the last time we had Uranus and Taurus was what? Like, I know that in the 20s, Uranus was in Taurus. It was, it was um, part of what ushered in because there was, it happened, I believe, either just before or just after the big collapse and it helped usher in the industrial revolution. Yeah, that's right. I knew it was something. And then it was also in Taurus for some other really big historical event. I can't remember what it is right now. I'm drawing a blank. Mercury retrograde is fucking me up, you guys. Like, if my hair doesn't say Mercury's in retrograde, I don't know what will. I look, <laughs> I look like I've gone through a blender, I swear. <laughs> You look beautiful. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's intense energy. The fact that the full moon falls right there with the Uranus energy is showing us that a lot of what we have to give up and accept that is leaving us are the things that we've been really comfortable in. Mm -hmm. We've been stuck in to an extent, clinging, attachments, these kinds of things. Yeah, I, I've i been saying for a very long time that uh, there has to be a change and, you know, that the world can't function the way it had been functioning forever. And now we're seeing that change and it's it's crazy. I didn't think it would be like I was when I first was initially contemplating the idea of an apocalypse, I was imagining like fire and brimstone. But I feel like this, it's been like a slow burn apocalypse, let's be real, you know? 
<laughs> but like it's all like lining up so perfectly and i feel like it couldn't have gone better you know i feel like this the it we're coming to the end of a really hard year and i'm really proud of everyone for yeah. making it through this it's not really related to astrology but i you know i wanted to express that because True. it's been a rough year for everybody <laughs> <laughs> and crazy for everybody it's so much and to be honest you know when i knew about uh, america's pluto return which um i don't really we can get into that more on a future video we can talk about that a little bit but when i first heard about that i knew 2020 was going to be a critical year and mm -hmm. led up to it i wasn't really sure anything was going to happen i'm like okay and then we get here and it's like boom <laughs> and i was like okay cool i'm glad it's happening right <laughs> like you said is after pluto return we're going to live in a world than what we've understood before it's a huge flip and when is the pluto return again it's actually uh february of 2022 and that actually okay. on which chart you use for the original uh you know conception of america but uh it peaks in 2022 and by the end of 2024 it should be a little better which uranus and taurus leaves uh it leaves Uranus leaves Taurus, I believe, in 2026. So we'll have that little end period to kind of rebuild, <laughs> I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I do feel like it'll start to get more on the upswing after 2022. So it'll mm -hmm. be here. For it. <laughs> One thing that I've uh, really like thought about and had like a very strong I don't know, like, a strong feeling that will happen is, uh, like, a change of currency and, like, a change of, like, how farming is done and, like, food and, like, the whole economy, I feel, is going to shift into a new way of being with Taurus being, or Uranus being in Taurus. Um, yeah, I feel like... I felt that... Everything. I felt that from the get-go too. So yeah. prepare for that. Everybody. <laughs> so, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the upcoming transit energies? Um, yeah. So I've got a little list here. Um, I have a few things written down, not a whole lot, but so Venus is moving into Libra, or it moved into Libra on the twenty seventh. Um, that's, I feel like, so Venus in Libra is considered exalted, I believe, or like, you know, Ooh. it's a higher placement for Libra or for Venus. Shit. Sorry. <laughs> it's, a, it's a better placement for Venus than a lot of other, uh, signs. It's Venus is very much at home in Libra. And so I feel like this energy is going to make people more like empathetic and humanitarian. You know, it's going to bring out a lot of like, uh, like harmonious energy in people. And I feel like we're really starting to feel that we're all in this together kind of energy, you know, and I feel like people are going to start like really seeking out where the pain is in society and actively trying to fix it with this transit. Yay. Um, yeah. Uh, and then Mercury is going direct November 3rd. That'll be great. Uh, Jupiter, er, Mars is going direct November 13th as well, which is also Friday the 13th. That's kind of fun. Uh, I've like always... Transit. 2020 is like a big joke on us with all the transits. Like, what the heck? Right. right. <laughs> it's so weird. Although, my mom and my grandma always said that Friday the 13th was, like, a lucky date. Uh, I don't know what the reasoning was. I've Friday the 13th has always been, like, the same as any other day for me. I've never really experienced There was one anything. Friday that was really lucky for me. I had my daughter, Flora. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. What month? February. Oh, She's nice. One of my two Aquarius children. <laughs> nice. 
Yes. <laughs> I'll um, the new moon Friday the 13th, too. Cool. Oh, I didn't even know that. That's cool. Admittedly, I've kind of gotten out of tune with the planets. I'm not going to lie. It's been a really rough year, <laughs> week, yeah. month. Um, I, yeah, I moved into my new place on that full moon that was August 3rd. I think that was in Aquarius. Yeah, that was the Aquarius full moon, right. August 3rd, um, was the day I moved into my apartment. And then, like, five days later, my whole hometown was destroyed by an inland hurricane. I missed it by, like, five days. And so ever since then, I've just been, like, kind of scrambling to pick up all the pieces. And it's been really hard to uh, keep up with where all the planets are. Um, but, you know, I, yeah, I'm managing. <laughs> well, we're getting back into it more now. And hopefully it'll help some people understand the energy is coming through. Right. Yeah. Um, I feel like maybe we should talk about like what the planets mean also because I feel like a lot of people like look into astrology and they're like what is all of this what does this mean you know uh it can be pretty confusing when you just like say oh Jupiter is conjunct Mars and you know like we should, on a future podcast maybe we can do that um that's up. a good idea we can focus on kind of breaking but I feel like a lot of people would really enjoy that and we can we can really focus our energy on breaking it down I like that. right does that do any of the viewers like have any questions about transits that they would like answered or like any questions about Samhain uh, like and anything you'd like us to talk about <laughs> that's guess okay I guess one thing, okay, so one thing I want to mention is uh, when the veil is thin as it is now, it's not necessarily just con connections to, like, deceased spirits or anything like that. Like, it's a really good time to, to connect to any deities that you might uh, prefer to connect with. Um, you can receive messages easily now, so it's a good time to try and channel automatic writing, however you can look up different ways to do that and try that. Um, and it's not just about those, the other spirits, like the nature spirits. It's like um, uh, the little people. It, these energies are a lot more active right now and, uh, and, and more integrated into our world than we're used to. So um, it's definitely uh, why also protect yourself to an extent, you know, but you can use the energy to tap in and get messages and send out messages to your past on loved ones. Mm -hmm. You want to honor them at this time, you know, you can um, offer them like if you have a drink, pour a little out for, for someone that passed away that you love. That's one small way of honoring um, the bonfire. What? Yes, bonfires. Fires in general, I feel like it's highly encouraged to burn things on Samhain, <laughs> you know, respectfully and responsibly, but I feel like it's it's a highly encouraged activity to hang out around bonfires. Yes. Um, one uh, activity that I really like to do for Samhain is to ingest mugwort. Um, mugwort is an herb that has been used for a very long time for women's health, but also for its um, mild psychoactive properties. You're not going to trip off of mugwort. <laughs> it just, it kind of um, induces like lucid dreaming and it kind of like shakes up your ability to like tap in to, you know, beyond the veil and like tap into spirit energy and whatnot. So I like to use it as a meditative aid. Um, it helps me for, or with uh, tarot and just channeling in general, but also like lucid dreaming and dream recall. If you have a really hard time remembering your dreams, mugwort tea will be your best friend. Um, I do recommend that everyone like researches the plant 
before taking it because it can interact with some medications and then also it stimulates the uterus so if you have a uterus uh be aware that it has like mild abortive properties and you know it it can cause you to have menstruation maybe earlier than you would expect so keep that in mind but mugwort is really good for all things psychic and all things channeling related it's also a herb that's associated with Samhain so you can decorate with it too <laughs> and it would be you know an acceptable uh like offering or something yeah I like that I like that you incorporated a little bit of your herbalism into it too <laughs> that's the thing I'm most comfortable with admittedly <laughs> um that's that's what it's about is integrating our 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 gifts into this you know? mm -hmm. we do as much as we're similar in our background we have we've taken in different things and so right i feel like i feel like you and i are definitely uh two ends of of a spectrum uh yeah. two sides of the same coin so to speak <laughs> and you know like everything really does just relate back to itself it's weird astrology at its core is like a tool for relating everything back to astrology. So like plants have astrological signs and gems have astrological signs and like everything yeah. can be related back to astrology. Oh, and speaking of astrology with the new moon, or I'm sorry, with the full moon energy, um, the, other, the other thing I want to mention is a really good idea right now, especially with the veil being, being thin, is uh, to write a list of exactly what you want to release. And because it is the, the, the witch's new year and the energy is, is starting the new cycle, you can also write what you want to grow and mm -hmm. what should happen over the coming year. Um, it's the perfect time to do it. The energy is amazing for, for getting, receiving messages and yes, Love numerology. I love numerology. I'm, I'm not good with numbers. I suck with numbers. And I never trust when I see repeated numbers. I'm always like, well, is that really the universe? Or am I just like looking for that number? I'm like, <laughs> That's the Virgo energy in you. You're like, hmm. Yeah, yeah. I never, I hardly trust numbers at all. I don't I, even like, I can't count <laughs> to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> I was always good at math. And I love numbers because I feel like it's a universal language. Um, so no matter where you come from in the world, it's something that we can all, all the cultures had some sort of counting system, um, at least that has all the cultures that recorded their history that we know of. And uh, on top of that, there's, there's a basic connotation for if you see one item, even if you don't know it's called one, that has a connotation of, you know, exactly what the number one means. And mm -hmm. if you see two, it has a connotation of what that number means. So it's, it's, it really is a universal language. Um, and when you really learn and understand it, you can almost read numbers, even if they're not repeating numbers, like a language. And it's kind of overwhelming at times. So <laughs> when, when people ask me to explain magic, I always say that it's like numeric code or like computer code, <laughs> even though like I don't understand, I understand magic, but I don't understand math. But like for some reason, like the two are the same thing, really. Yeah. Art, math, and magic are like the same thing. Right. But it's like in the Matrix, you know, <laughs> when people are like reading the computer codes, it's just a bunch of ones and zeros. And to do magic is to like insert your own code into the grand code, you know? Yeah. And it, it takes, it takes practice, but really, you know, it's all numbers in we one, should, one way or another. We should do another one on uh, our concepts of magic and what that means to us too. That would be fun. Um, yeah, that'd be fun because magic is so subjective, you know, from person to, if you ask three witches what magic is, you'll get like seven different answers. <laughs> <laughs> but we all know we can do it. 
Right, right. Also, yeah, it's very important, I feel, I, I really want to express that, like, everyone can do magic. You do not have to be a witch. You do not have to be an occultist. You do not have to be anything. You can be a normal-ass person with flaws and and problems in your life, and you can still do magic. It's it's possible, I promise. <laughs> you do magic every day, and you don't make Right, right. Like, even just being alive is magic, <laughs> you know? It's uh, just honoring the fact that, like, we're here, and, like, we don't really know why we're here. We don't really know what's going on, but to weave magic and to practice magic is to like honor that chaos and that unknown energy, you know? I love that. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody else have any more questions or is there anything else that you wanted to talk about today? Difference between doing magic and being a witch. So I feel like anyone can do magic like we were saying you know um making a song like playing music is very magical making art is very magical but that doesn't necessarily make you a witch i feel like to be a witch is to take up a certain title and a certain like stance within society uh, back in the day, witches were everything. They were the teachers, the doctors, the therapists, you know, the exorcists, the spiritual leaders. They did they did everything. If you had a problem that you couldn't solve, you usually went to a witch or a wise person or a medicine person, you know. And so they were the early scientists. And nowadays, to be a witch is to, like, back then it it was to be, like, to the the forging, like the person who forged the path, right? The person who looked into the science and who brought logic. But nowadays I feel like it's someone who connects back to nature and someone who connects back to like a more creative, illogical side. Maybe not illogical, but you know what I mean? There's like that, that one side that's very like staunchly logical and the other side that's more creative and flowy to be a witch is to become as nature you know and not really focus too much on uh being something specific just to like fade into nature <laughs> i hope that made sense <laughs> okay what what types of rituals do you request what do you mean by that michelle I'm Did you sure. mean recommend? Probably recommend, right? That's that's how I read it at first. <laughs> for for this time right now, I would recommend um you know, like I have I have personally I have like an ancestor altar. And so I today I tended to it, I cleaned it up. Um even if you just have photographs of your passed on loved ones. Uh, you know, take some time with them. That's a big thing. However, you really want to honor them. Traditionally, you could offer them food or, you know, drink. And um, you could even offer flowers, you know, um, light a candle, the fire thing that kind of ties in, you know, Samhain and Dia de los Muertos. Um, and I definitely suggest doing a ritual to, to let go and release some energy, um, except how, here's a better way to describe that. Take some time to write out the things that you want to accept that you have to release. You know, it's kind of funny that that was like the first spell that I ever really did. I, uh, it, it was Samhain 10 years ago, almost to the day, actually. I think it might have been 10 years ago today that I wrote down a list of all the things I wanted to burn away and be rid of. And I burnt them in my cauldron, which I actually have my cauldron right here. <laughs> the same cauldron from 10 years ago. I love it. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, um, you know, ritual is kind of like you can do rituals that are like pre written that have been, you know, like done over and over again by other people. But for the most part, magic and ritual is so subjective and it really changes from person to person. So there's like certain things you can incorporate into the ritual, like uh, offering food to your ancestors or lighting a, a specific candle, you know. But for the most part, it's all up to you, really. I would I would recommend always casting a circle especially if you are doing like a spirit related work or like trying to channel a deity or really anything that involves like going beyond the veil. I would always recommend casting a circle. Yes. But beyond <laughs> that, you can do whatever you want. It's really neat. <laughs> um, but yeah, like some, some things for Samhain would definitely be uh, like burning away the old and letting the new come in and manifesting what new things you would like to see in the coming year. Yep. Those are the main themes. And if you just follow your gut, it'll lead you. I mean, the veil is thin now too. So you can even ask for help and being guided in, in how you should honor them. Even if it's the weirdest thing that comes into you and you're like, this doesn't make any sense to me you might if you follow through you might find out later that it makes a lot more sense and it'll click later and you'll be like whoa i just did that thing with that thing and now it's yeah <laughs> I, I love when i like get an urge to do something and like my logic brain is always like well that doesn't make any sense right what do you mean i should bury this jar in a cemetery like <laughs> i don't know but then yeah. i do it and something happens you know like there's always like a, an effect yes. every time something always comes about and it always makes sense so just like follow your intuition and like let your ancestor like you can even just light a candle and ask hey ancestors can you help me out here and they will they will help you you just have to listen yep that's the biggest part listen right now is a good time to listen <laughs> And I feel like now is a really easy time to listen to because, you know, like we were saying, the veil is thin and everything's so potent right now. You, anyone could just pick up a, a book about witchcraft and I feel fall, like they could fall into it fairly easily at this time. Yes, like you did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, it, I, I like to go off on little story tangents <laughs> but you know I, I got into witchcraft because I thought a girl at school had cursed me she had watched the craft one too many times we were like 13 yeah it was 10 years ago so we were 13 and she had told me something stupid and I was like well that's not true and she's like oh I'm a witch I'm gonna curse you because you said I was lying Ooh. and so I got really scared and I, <laughs> I went to um this store that it was like a like a metaphysical shop and the lady there actually kind of became like my teacher in a way she would like give me things she told me how to protect myself and how to cast a circle and she'd give me like book recommendations and she kind of like helped me learn I just have to say it sounds like that one chick wanted to be like a craft but you got to live it Right, was, yeah, I kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that I love that. I love that you had that. That's amazing. I didn't know that. So I'm glad yeah, you Yeah, I, sorry, <laughs> I get distracted. You know, my, my Mercury and Sagittarius love story time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. Are there any more questions? Uh, I think we've covered everything we wanted to touch on today, right? Yeah, for the most part, I'd say everything has been covered. Yeah, I think, I think all my notes covered everything. I wrote a lot of notes for myself because that's my Gemini. I, 
my my notes were very <laughs> minimal. <laughs> I panicked. I was like, "Oh no, what do I write?" <laughs> Look at that. Between Sagittarius Mercury and Gemini. Look at my notes. <laughs> The difference, people want to say astrology isn't real, but look at us. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I enjoyed this. This was a good time. We'll be back yeah. soon for another. So are we doing our the next one on the next full moon? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That sounds right. right to me. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll for sure uh, talk about it. If we want to do another one in between for the new moon, we could too. If we, if yeah, we, we could do that. we'll keep you guys posted on yeah, we'll what the plan it. is. <laughs> but thank you for everybody who who tuned in, and we're gonna post this video on all our platforms too, so you'll be able to catch it if you missed it. So, yes, thank you all. I, we really appreciate all the support and all the love, and you know. The first episode of a podcast I, is never, like, completely coherent, but I feel like you and I were pretty coherent, you know? We stayed on topic pretty well. <laughs> great. I thought we did great, so. Yeah. Everybody have a good night. Happy Halloween. Yes. Happy holidays, everyone. I hope everyone stays safe and has a good time, and, yeah. Be festive. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Bye.